media as the patron saint of human rights for a dazzling array of worthy causes. She's charismatic, persuasive and passionate. But is she really a good Samaritan fighting against government oppression and abuse or is there something else at play? Derek traveled from the northwest to the Western Cape to discover the real Debbie Els and also the questions her many supporters appear to have ignored. Our country faces many challenges like crime, violence and corruption. But fortunately, there are selfless people dedicating their lives to fighting for what's important. The government wants to take away our rights to protect ourselves. One woman has made it her mission to protect South Africa from COVID, lockdown, gender-based violence, farm murders, and of course gun laws and everything in between. She's led protests around the country and even campaigned some issues abroad. Her name is Debbie Else. The woman of our country is being raped and murdered. But some online research leaves a nagging feeling that things aren't what they seem. So we head to Rustenburg in the northwest on a quest for the truth. It's here that we meet a retired police captain using her considerable investigative skills to unmask the real Debbie. When did you first hear about Debbie Hills? Met die Brendan Honor moord, um, die optog in Senekal, was sy baie betrokke, sy het um, baie live uitsendings gemaakt op Facebook. En dan gee sy voor asof sy nou verslag doen en weet wat daar aangaan. And followers from across the world tune in to her live social media feeds for news about the latest campaigns and causes. Hi people. I'm coming up just to tell give you a bit of update. Members, what they can bereik op our platforms is from 130,000. Hanley Nell spent 22 years in the police service and says she knows a scam when she sees one. Say scandalous, say do not scandalous. But it doesn't really affect you. The thing, the trauma. Hanley launched her investigation after an anti-lockdown protest in Cape Town last year made the news. Daddy and some protesters were involved in a tussle with the police. Was it for my duidelijk, hulle het die politie uitgeloop. These police, okay, we will not stop until they are being dealt with. And you have a lawsuit that is going to script for nothing coming your way. You will pay for what you've done to me. I have to sit up straight now. I can't lay down. I can't hardly walk. I'm wearing a brace. Debbie apparently laid charges against the officers and in the weeks that followed, shared details online about her injuries. Ek het gehoor dat baby beweer het sy daar rug gebreek. The L1, the L2 and a leaking L4. My hip might be fractured. Within days of the incident, Debbie was apparently wheelchair bound. Sy het op een stadium, um, het sy al medical records gewaas, maar sy wees nie die Hanley worked meticulously using screenshots from Debbie's Facebook feed. She carefully put together the pieces of the puzzle, eventually finding evidence that tell a very different story. What she did is iets van osteoporose en van been wat verbroke al dat dit niks te doen met polisie wat jou rug gebreek het. But it seems being confined to a wheelchair hasn't slowed Debbie down. They've also torn my meniscus, my knee, and I got a death sentence on the 9th of October. The death sentence Debbie is referring to is when doctors supposedly found evidence of lung cancer during the original CT scan to check out her spinal injuries. Yes, they found a mass, a very large mass in my left lung. So I might have leukemia. Uh, they think it's in my bones already. It is now in my right lung as well, and I've got lumps under my arms. Information about a person's medical condition is confidential. 
but carte blanche has decided to share some details because it's in the public interest the mass in her upper left lung is reportedly smoking related emphysema and she had an infection which improved somewhat by the end of november debbie's gp has confirmed all the injuries and cancers and yet there's no mention of cancer on the documents we've seen with debbie else supporting so many causes and her exorbitant medical bills on top of that people are graciously opening their wallets offering financial support from across the globe according to an online fundraising page she successfully raised over 26000 rands in 2021 and that's just one campaign vandag een af het hulle op op haar facebook groepe ehm donasies gevra want sy het nie 'n medis nie en sy wil nie graag staats hospitaal te gaan nie yet it appears that Debbie's examinations and scans were done at Cape Town's Carl Bremer State Hospital how much do you think she collected in uh, donations for her medical expenses ek het nou nie toegang tot haar bankrekening nie maar sy het vir baie mense bedank now thank you all for everything that you've done there are some people that don't believe what i say so i just want to show you my one lot of medication like you can see is 1291 rand hanley managed to get sight of the original prescription and that amount is in fact for weight loss injections for debbie's daughter keen to hear her side of the story we called to set up an appointment with debbie 2:30 tomorrow in Cape Town at uh, your location. Yes. Within 5 minutes, her lawyer Tamara Victor called me back. Eric, um I have a few questions as uh you know my client's legal representative about the story that you want to do tomorrow. After answering her questions, Victor said she needed to confer with her client. I'll I'll, I'll give you a call back. Is that okay? That's fine. You can speak to me or our producer. That'll be good. And though that call never came, we headed to the mother city early the next morning. So next stop Cape Town. To fully appreciate the Debbie Ell story, we need to venture back in time. Before her social activism, she was manager to the stars. According to various sources, Debbie had big dreams that seldom became a reality. And when money did come in, it really made it to the artists themselves. Francois Malan is a senior member of the Congress of the People. We meet in the gardens at Parliament. He too has a history with Debbie Ells. When you meet somebody for the first time, you never know who you meet until you walk a path with someone. Debbie also made an impression on party leader Mosuela Kota, and they welcomed her with open arms. And at that stage, she became part of the Finnish of Cup, yes. Then Debbie came up with the idea of making a movie to highlight the plight of the country's farmers, apparently even writing the screenplay herself. We had some questions about Francois's role in the scheme and put them to him in an online chat a few days later. I thought it was um, not a bad idea to, to showcase the current atrocities. Debbie's plan included a marketing video. news interview style and Francois would ask the questions and she would explain the movie's purpose I never saw the script though I must say and I didn't thought about asking for evidence of the script because there was no reason to doubt and it was she was convincing despite assistance donations and a trip to the USA the movie never materialized and Francois started doubting her intentions He recalls an incident at Parliament where Debbie had a fleeting encounter with former DA leader Musi Mayamane. She insisted Milan take a photo of him. She posted this and saying, "Look here, I've spoken to Musi Mayamane and we're going to have meetings blah blah blah." She uses every opportunity she can get. She even aspired to becoming part of Cope's leadership, but then Francois got his hands on some eye-opening information. I received intel that was on social media. And the guys in of doing gigs, arranging talent, arranging artists to come, and then doing the gigs and not getting paid. And the people are asking where's my money? Cope's public image was at risk. Debbie was asked to walk away, but she didn't leave the limelight. Uh, I am here for the farmers. Back in Cape Town there's still no word from Debbie or her lawyer. So we head into the suburbs. hoping to meet her face to face. 
So Debbie agreed to an appointment this afternoon. Tamara said she would confirm it in a matter of minutes. It's more than 20 hours later. So we've flown down to Cape Town to meet Debbie Ellis. And after all that, we're told that Debbie moved out some time ago. So it's another call to her lawyer, Tamara Victor. Um, uh, Debbie um, wasn't, well, she isn't very well. And she declined the invitation. I thought you had got the, the voice note. That's why I didn't phone you again. You sent it to this number? Yes, yes. But we have no record of having received a voice note. Is she still in a wheelchair? Yes. She's still in a wheelchair. She's, she's mostly um, seated and she's going for a lot of treatments at the moment. It's interesting. Debbie was strong enough to do an online interview the very next day. Again, she described all her medical conditions. Um, it's my choice not to take chemo. It's my choice not to have the back operation. They wanted me to have a spinal operation. It's my choice. It's my body. Instead, Debbie has opted for alternative treatment at a clinic in Cape Town. This is just a detox. I can do your lab treatment process. The clinic is nowhere to be found on the internet, but Hadley now managed to get a copy of an invoice for some of Debbie's treatments. There is no practice number on the invoice, no phone number, and her treatment is simply listed as a six-day combo detox treatment charged at 8,000 rands. I get the problem that say, um Ook vir die mense beweer dat hierdie alternative treatment het uh, 100% slagcijfer. Hanley laid fraud charges against Debbie late last year and the investigation is ongoing. Meanwhile, rumors of our investigation this week fired up Debbie's diehard supporters and her lawyer sent a letter saying that her client is, quote, vehemently opposed to the allegations. What would you like to see happen here? Yeah.